to this week's bonus episode of the DCL Duo podcast brought to you by my path unwinding travel. And Sam, I hope you got your towel ready because we're going to be spilling the tea tonight, I think. so. <laughs> I love it. Isn't that what Brian. the kids are saying these days? Spill the tea? I don't know. I don't know. These I phrases. don't know. Uh, what's the hot goss? I feel like that's more, that's probably a better one. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm still trying to make fetch happen. Okay. So <laughs> we'll see. It's not going to happen. <laughs> fetch is not going to happen. Well, we're spilling the tea because we've got a, a former... Disney cast member essentially with us, or at least a Disney Cruise Line cast member with us, Danny. Let me start by welcoming Danny to the show. Welcome, Danny. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to talk everything cruising because I love to cruise. <laughs> nice. That's well, awesome. And we have to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Chad Pennycuff over at the My DVC Points podcast. He had Danny on a show not too long ago now, and uh, he I am to me to say, go listen to my show this <laughs> week and he volunteered Danny to come on our show in the middle of his show and so uh, we reached out and she was kind enough to fulfill that promise to Chad and so we're excited to have her on this evening. Danny, we love to start with all of our guests. So what's your cruising background? And I want to separate, we're going to talk a lot about your professional background with cruising. So if you want to touch on it here, fantastic. But I'd also love to know just, you know, do you cruise personally these days? And, uh, you know, what's your experience like with other cruise lines and Disney cruise lines? So yeah, give us your cruising creds. So I, I've actually never been on a cruise before. The, you know, wow. I, I just came on here, uh, know nothing about it. Always just dreamed of going going on a cruise. <laughs> no, um, oh gosh, my cruising background. I guess like it first started. I, I was in high school and I went on my very very first cruise with my family, uh, and we did as our very first cruise. We did an Alaskan cruise, which oh, wow. like. If you know anyone who like is an avid cruiser, they'll always tell you like, don't do Alaska as your first because you're going to be ruined. Like that is like <laughs> the pinnacle of cruises. But um, I guess you could say I was hooked after that. Uh, and then, yeah, I worked on cruise ships for about 10 years. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. You don't look old enough to have worked on cruise ships for 10 years, Danny. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're I love welcome. you already. <laughs> yeah, no, I I started on ships right out of college. So I went to, I know you're on the other coast, but I went to the University of Central Florida in Orlando. I went to the Rosen School of Hospitality um, because I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And it sounded really cool that I could take wine tasting courses and like, you know, food course, food preparation courses. I'm like, oh, yeah, I could totally do that. And uh, that led me to my first gig working on cruise ships right out of college. So funny enough, I actually went to this career fair and I met uh, this guy and he's like, do you want to travel the world and, and, you know, make some money and, and work on a cruise ship? And I'm like, <laughs> this sounds like a huge scam. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, uh, do you have one of those papers that can just take one? Movies. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, uh, even though I thought it was a scam, I was like, this sounds like the best scam ever. And uh, if I don't return home, then it'll be a good story, I guess. Um, so yeah, I took the job. And my first job ever on cruise ships was called a port and shopping guide. So think like QVC on board a cruise ship and like everybody's personal shopper. Ah. So you're so like you're when one I flip of those people I channel. watch on TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like the person when I flip through the channel and they're like telling me all the things I have to go see and buy at this port. You're that you're that person. That was me. And so funny enough, you know, right out of college, I had literally never done any public speaking video, anything in my life. And I get there and they're like, you're going to have your own television show. <laughs> Like, what the heck are you talking about? 
So yeah, I used to do like these huge presentations in like the big theater on a stage. I had like never talked in front of anyone in my whole entire life, except for like speech classes, I guess, when you're in college. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun though. Like I got to meet people from all over, um, especially working on ships, you know? And it's funny, you mentioned I was on Chad's show and the reason why I ended up here. Anytime I started telling Chad about like the behind the scenes of like being a crew member, he's like, oh, I, we got it. We got it. There's another show for this. You got to get on there. <laughs> well, Danny, what so, yeah, was the there's... first, you mentioned the that you went to work for, what was the first cruise line you went to work with, I guess? So that was the cool thing about this company is we actually worked on many of the different cruise lines. So the CEO of that company, he was a former cruise director, and he just saw a need for people wanting to go shopping in the ports of call. People would always ask him when he was a cruise director, like, where should I shop? How do I know if it's safe? How do I know if it's good? And so he started this program um, and it was really cool. He had so many connections in the industry. And so I worked on Norwegian Cruise Line, Holland America, Silver Sea, Disney Cruise Line. Like we were kind of all over the board. So we were on all different cruise ships and one one contract I could be on Norwegian. The next contract I could be on Disney. So it was, yeah, we were all over the board. And how many different cruise lines, sorry, Brian, how many different cruise lines did you end up working on in your time with that company? So... I did Norwegian, Holland, Silver Sea, Disney. I think that's it. Yeah, four. Wow. Four different. That's amazing. And and where did you get to go? Like what destinations? Like were you mostly in the Caribbean? Were you, you know, over in Europe? Were you, you know, sort of all over the place or or more concentrated in one place? So my first and, and mind you, at this time, like I had never traveled anywhere. Well, no, I went out of the country once, maybe, maybe twice. I think on my first Alaska cruise, we went to like Vancouver. It, th- right. That was really the only place <laughs> I'd ever traveled. And uh, my very first cruise, they're like, you're going to go to Hawaii. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. You've got to be kidding me. Like, I like really, and I'm going to, you know, this is a real thing. I get to go to Hawaii on my first cruise. So my very first cruise was, um, the Hawaiian cruise. And then right from there, the ship transitioned and we started doing Alaska. So I got to do my very first season in Alaska. We did all over the Caribbean and then actually once, so I did that until 2016. And then I moved over to DVC, um, Disney Vacation Club, and I worked on board the cruise ships as a Disney Vacation Club guide. And we got to do a lot of other itineraries that I had never done before. So I think now I've probably done every single cruise itinerary that Disney Cruise Line does. So we wow. went, you know, all over Europe and, you know, all over the Caribbean, Alaska, Hawaii. So yeah, went all over the world. <laughs> Amazing. And which which ships have you been on with Disney? So I have been on the four originals. And it's funny you ask that because being in the cruise industry for so long, I feel like I'm always like in the know about every cruise ship. I mean, I sailed on, you know, the the dream, the magic, the the wonder and the what am I forgetting? Fantasy. Fantasy. Thank you. That was actually the (laughs) ship I was on the most. Um, And so I always knew, you know, everything about those ships. And now that the wish has come out, I haven't been on the wish yet. And it feels a little weird when people are talking to me and teaching me about, you know, this new ship that came out. So yeah, I was on the, the four original ships. Awesome. Nice. Amazing. I'm curious when you had the personal shopper gig, I'm going to call it that. It probably has a fancier title than that. But were you were you like crew on board the ship? So like we know from talking to like entertainers and such that there's like there's the crew on board and then like the entertainers sometimes come on and they get maybe like an actual guest cabin at times yeah. or things like that. Like what was your how were you classified on the ship when you were on there doing that kind of work? 
Yeah, so very different lives as a port shopping guide versus a DVC guide on the ship. So as a port shopping guide, I was considered actually an officer, which so there's it's very much cruise life. And this is like the the juicy stuff. So (laughs) cruise life is very much like the military in a sense. So I'm sure you've seen the people with the stripes and and the whites. Yeah. Yeah. And so in the, in cruise life, like those stripes are, are a pretty big deal. So I didn't have like one of those, they call them penguin suits. I didn't have one of those, but I was actually a three and a half striped officer, which is really high up. And, and that's, I don't know why I was, I was not important at all. I did like not, you know, do have this like crazy gig, But I think it's just because of all the connections that the CEO of my company had from the Mm -hmm. cruise industry. So when he started the position, he was like, look, if we're going to do this, you got to give my people this and this and this. And so we were officers. We had our own cabins, which is a big deal when you work on a cruise ship because a lot of crew members sleep, you know, two, three, four, sometimes even more to a cabin. And they have like an indoor cabin and they're like, you know, all these decks below the, right. the guest <laughs> level. The belly of the beast. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so my stateroom was typically like a pretty decent sized cabin with like a couch and like a pretty big bed. And I had a huge porthole. And yeah, so it was pretty nice gig. Um, and then also with that, we got all like the guest privileges as well. So, you know, behind the scenes, we call it the I-95. That's like the crew area where all the crew, I'm sure you probably heard of that. Right. It's the highway. (laughs) Exactly. And so on the I-95, you typically have your crew mess, you have an officer's mess. So that's like where you have, you know, dinner and stuff or all your meals. And so I could eat in either of those messes. And then I could also go to the crew bar and stuff like that. But I could also eat in all of the restaurants if I wanted to as well. Go to all the bars up in the the crew areas, hang out with the the guests. So that was, you know, a really cool perk of that too. And so I got to really experience like both sides. And then when I was on the DVC side, we were actually not crew on board. So I was a Disney cast member. Um, And then we were just cast on business is what they're called. And so we stayed in a guest stateroom. So we were not even in the crew area at all, um, which was just so weird for me. So, you know, and, and kind of what you were talking about, Brian, is there, there was this like in between status and that was like your entertainers, your guest entertainers that they would bring on board. So like a lot of your magicians and your comedians they would have not necessarily a guest stateroom. It was a crew stateroom, but it was usually in a guest area behind like some random door. Oh, okay. interesting. That makes sense. So like yeah. Yeah. kind yeah. of an in-between. And so I got to experience what it was like to be, you know, cast on business versus, um, you know, a crew member. And when we were cast on business, the part that I really missed the most was that we couldn't go to the crew bar. We couldn't go <laughs> eat with the crew, which oh. I missed a lot. So you so you had to completely, when you were cast on business, so selling DVC on the cruise ship, you had to always go to like the guest restaurants and- yeah. Wow. So you're really kind of separated from the crew then, even though you're on board, not just for like one cruise, right? You're on board for the length of a contract. So no, we would actually do very different. So as a port shopping guide, I would do anywhere from three to six month contracts. Okay. So I was on the whole time. As a DVC guide, I would only go on for like one or two cruises at a time. And I would leave. So the funny thing is, when I was a port shopping guide, regular crew member, um, I sold my car. I didn't have a place to live. Like, (laughs) I was a real-life crew member. I was like, you know, a a seaman. And when I worked for DVC, in in my mind, like, I am taking the next step. Like, I'm becoming a real-life person, and I am getting a car, and I'm getting an apartment, and I'm going to, like, 
go grocery shopping, which I hadn't done in like six years. And (laughs) yeah, it was like, for me, that was a huge transition, but it was probably the perfect transition because if you, you know, have obviously probably met a lot of crew members and talked to a lot of people on ships and it really is such a fantasy world out there. And it's very hard to transition to regular land life. Like you'll meet people that have went on a cruise ship. They thought they were going to do one contract. It's like the most infamous thing you hear is I went out for one contract and like 40 years later, like here I am still. Because it's hard. It's, it's, It's hard to find a gig on land where you know, you wake up in a new country every day. There's always new and fun, exciting things going on. There's always people around and you get to save almost all the money that you make, which is, I mean, where do you get to do that? You know, everything. Yeah, right. You covered. don't have to pay for your food. Most of the, I mean, obviously if you're on, um, on shore leave or something like that, right. You've got, you might be buying drinks or food or whatever, but on the, on the ship, there's not a lot for you all to spend your money on when you're crew. Exactly. Right. I mean, yeah, you get spoiled. That's for sure. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to hear you describe it, Danny. It's almost like your DVC gig, what you're really doing is like, it's a business trip. You know, I'm headed out on the sea, going to do some work and then I'll come back and I've got my home base. Whereas, you know, your crew life example is very much like I'm, I'm, I'm on work. I'm on work the entire time. Um, yeah. I'm sort of interested in something you said though, like the the sort of lure of it as being, you know, these you get to go to these exotic places and things are new and constantly new. Do you get a little bit of Groundhog Day? Because, you know, if I think about like the crew on board, like the dream doing these like three and four night sailings, like I, I always think like, my gosh, it just must be like Groundhog Day over and over again. Like right. up, we're back to port. Up, it's an early warning. Up, we're back. You know, that sort of thing. It's embarkation, debarkation day. Yeah. Does it get, does <laughs> it get three monotonous days. at all? Or is it is it really kind of as romantic as you might be describing it a little bit? Yeah. It's funny. It, my answer would have been totally different if I was still working on board, I can guarantee yeah. that because yeah. I think back and I try my best to remember exactly how I was feeling in the moment. So it's kind of like, have you ever been on like a really exciting vacation and there's like, you have all these things planned and like, you're just go, 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 go. And, and it's fun, but there's like, you know, some stress involved in it and the planning and different things pop up and, And then you get home and you talk about that trip for weeks, months, years even, you know, and you just, you only remember like the amazing things about it. I think that's how it is. Like I remember (laughs) being on my Alaskan contract and just being like, oh, we have to go to Juno again? (laughs) Like, are you (laughs) kidding me? (laughs) Like, I just want to be on a beach somewhere. So yeah, there there definitely is some of that, but you know it, it's all perspective, right? Because uh, there's millions of people that would dream to go to Juno for the fiftieth time, you know. But and then when you get on land and you're not in that life anymore, you're like, oh, I wish I was going to Juno tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, speaking yeah. of romanticizing, I, well, we can't help but mention that you met your Prince Charming on <laughs> Disney Cruise Line. And I feel like we need to hear about that. I did. Yeah. So um, my boyfriend, Kevin, he also worked for DVC as well. And so we met, you know, he was on the cruise team and we met working um, on Disney Cruise Line. And we met very, um, we met and then COVID happened very shortly after. And so yeah, we've had quite a wild ride. We have a, a, a funny story and a crazy story. Um, you know, we working on board the ship and meeting there, like, you know, that is so romantic and like, <laughs> having worked on ships for so long, I'm like, yeah, I'm probably going to meet someone on a cruise ship, I guess. (laughs) Um, But then, yeah, though, it it happened really perfectly because like I said, uh, when I was a DVC guide, we didn't do these long contracts. So we had very different schedules. In fact, we got our schedule for the, you know, the quarter that was coming up 
once we started dating and I think we only had one cruise together and it was like a four night cruise. And so we were just going to be ships passing it in the night. And we're just (laughs) like, how, how are we going to do this? And I remember when we first started dating, I would be on land and he would be on a ship and um, he'd get done with like a, a long day of work and the service on board is like really bad. And so he would have to lay on the floor right next to the, the door to his cabin to talk to me at night. Um, oh my and so that's kind of how we communicated. And it, it was good because we both understood the lifestyle mm-hmm. out there. It wasn't like, you know, why aren't you talking to me all day? Like, where have you mm-hmm. been? It's like, I knew, you know, on, on port days, I was probably going to talk to him a little bit more on sea days. It was like, forget about it. I'm probably <laughs> not going to talk to you for at least 12 hours. Right. Um, and so that was, you know, a little crazy. And we're just like, well, I guess we'll just play it by ear and figure it out and see if we can make it work. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. Um, and also because we work together, we really didn't want people to know that we were starting to date, you know, in the beginning of a relationship, like you don't really know what's going to happen. You don't want all the gossip and all the drama. And so we kept it very quiet. Nobody knew about it. Even like our closest friends didn't know for a little while. And then, um, and then COVID hit and we're like, well, this is convenient (laughs) (laughs) because this will be really easy to keep a secret now because we're not going to see anyone or talk to anyone. Um, And so, yeah, COVID hit and we're like, oh, we're going to find out real quick if we like each other. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to spend a lot of time just together. We spent a lot of time together and um, we're both, you know, adventurers at heart. He loves to travel. I love to travel. And so, we actually took like the most epic road trip ever during COVID. We rented a um, an RV and we wow. drove all around the country. We went to 22 different states. You know, wow. we were trying to figure out if we liked each other or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Brian's dad told him uh, years and years ago that the best test of whether or not you're like going to end up with somebody is to drive across country with them. And I will tell you that Brian and I, about uh, maybe a year into our relationship, maybe a little bit more, drove across the country together together. Um, twice and then a year later <laughs> drove you know because we had to drive there and back right we have to, we had drove from from law school in dc all the way out to seattle where brian was spending his summer at a law firm and then back at the end of the summer i had spent my summer in new york and then after graduation we then drove across country to seattle to move so we didn't kill each other we're married today um i'd say mm, kind of successfully maybe I don't know. I don't it'll, know. Be fif- it'll be 15 Check. years this summer. So Check, back next, so Check back next year. Check back next year. We'll see where we're at. <laughs> so I have a question for you then. I don't know if, if you remember the this question, but do you remember like your highest high and your lowest low from that trip? <laughs> I remember a low low, um, which was... Uh, there was like one day where Brian was really exhausted and I had to drive... Um, and I say this because I don't drive stick and that's the kind of car he had. He did not, he had a a stick, not an automatic. And I had to like, get like going from an on-ramp onto the Uh, highway. I I lined her up on an on-ramp and I was like, I just need like an hour. And so like, I lined her up on an on-ramp and got her, like she got into first and I was like, once you're in first, like getting into getting into the other is much, much easier. So I got up to highway speed, we're driving and then. The it was trip terrifying. had been fine all the way up until that point. And then like for that one hour of driving, it was like traffic backups, accidents, <laughs> everywhere. Rain I was thunderstorms. Yeah. And I was oh like, just pull goodness. over. I'll, I've got it from here. So it yes. was so that was my that was my low low. It was terrifying. That was my low low. Sam, as well. did you plan yeah. that so that you didn't have to drive the rest <laughs> of the trip? Seriously, I kind of wish I did. But um oh. yeah, no, I I mean I he tried to train me in in learning stick. I will say to this day, I do not drive stick. I was stick just gonna so. say, do you drive stick now? No. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, totally. No. And neither does Brian, though, to be fair. I mean, like, he now has no, an I know automatic. how to. I know yes, how to. Brian can drive a stick if he needed to, but he hasn't in years and when years. When the zombie because... invasion comes and we have to drive a manual car someplace, <laughs> I will have to be the one to do That's it. Right. So. Please yeah. come yeah. and pick me up because I'll be screwed. Because <laughs> you'll be screwed. I think like, knows most, how, but not yeah, me. That's for sure. Uh, but gosh, I a, hi, I a, hi. I gotta wait, but we gotta answer the hi, hi. Um, you know, that's really hard. I feel like we stayed at like every Best Western across the country. Um, I yeah. feel probably one of the high highs was that we did stop at um, Mount Rushmore. That was like a cool, like I would never like go to be fair, no offense to anyone from South Dakota, but it's not like a destination that I have like, oh, I must, oh, I must go to South Dakota. Right. Yeah. But if you're driving through South Dakota, you must, or if you're driving across country, why not take that route and see Mount Rushmore? Right. We so, said the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. that was pretty cool. And we I didn't know each other. So that's, that's a high. That's high. Awesome. <laughs> I think so, I share them. Um, she, she nailed the low, low and actually the high, high now. The only thing that Mount Rushmore was funny because we got there and I was like, Huh. That's, that's it. it? <laughs> All right. I mean, I guess that's interesting. It was much smaller. Like when you got there, it was like tiny in comparison to what you have it like built up in your mind can, as being. But this, how like, crazy would it be if you just like stumbled upon that? <laughs> like you didn't know it, it would be it. and you were just like, what in the world? Yes. <laughs> it'd be Did you like horseback riding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like if aliens come down to the to Earth and see Mount Rushmore, they're gonna be like, "What are these people thinking? Like this is the weirdest society ever." They carved these huge bases in the side of a mountain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm just picturing so, it. <laughs> right? Even funnier. Oh no, my goodness! I, so I want- you want to hear? I want to hear about your stories from traveling because you you know you have all this experience traveling on a cruise ship, and now you've got. We'll call it a land yacht. <laughs> You're yeah. traveling around. Yeah. How I have was to that? tell you about my low low. And yeah, I, I know like, you know, we're really just getting to know each other here, but we're going to get to know each other a lot better right now. I um, love it. So Kev and I had been dating, I don't know, what, three months at the time. And we went to, oh, gosh, there's so many. Um, there's a couple lows. So I'll, I'll tell you this one first. We went to um, the Great Sand Dunes National Park. Oh, and cool. in our head, we're thinking like, oh, sand, like it's like a beach. So it's going to be, you know, at sea level. <laughs> and I did not realize, you know, how much we were going to climb to get there. And oh, wow. I, I either had altitude sickness or I, I had GI. Um, but yeah, that happened. In a tiny van with my boyfriend of like three months. <laughs> so, yeah, and a lot of we're people still have together. Rules about, yeah, a lot of people have rules about like not even farting in front of like their partner for like a year, right? I mean, I'm not I'm saying I like, do. I'm, I'm talking yeah. both ends, like nonstop <laughs> until like three o'clock in the morning. Like, yeah, we're getting to know each other. You're going to either it. take it or you're going to leave it right now. <laughs> <laughs> You find yeah, out so real that, quick that was, if he loved you. Yeah, yeah. I I found out very very fast. Um, he was amazing. And then um, another low was we were in Sedona, and we found this awesome, um, like you know, free government owned land spot. They have them all over the West Coast. I'm sure you know about them. And um, we found this awesome spot and we got a little greedy because we were like, you know what, That we, we took a little walk and we're like, this spot over here looks really epic for the sunset. And then we can wake up, you know, open our doors in the morning and we have these epic views and the sunrise right right over here. And so we're like, let's move the van. And so we, we go to move the van. The sun is like just coming down. And um, Kev is a really good driver really really good driver but didn't see this ditch and so he went into the ditch and the back oh my- wheel got stuck oh no and we were completely alone nobody was around like we had zero cell phone service and we're like huh we didn't we didn't 
think about this. Like, we didn't think this one through. And so, no joke, we go into the van, we open up our silverware drawer, and we get out two, like, teaspoons. And we are just trying to, like, dig our van. Because yeah. we have nothing else to dig our <laughs> van no out shovels. with. And, like, later on, we find out that there's all these, like, you know, this happens all the time, apparently, in van life. Like, we were talking to some of our van life friends, and they're like, oh, yeah, we, we get stuck all the time. And there's yeah. this, like, little device thing that you use. You put it under the tire, and your tire, like, comes right out of the ditch. But we did not have that, nor did we <laughs> even know it existed. So, you know, Kev's on his hands and knees, like, digging. I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's probably scorpions here, like, huge, huge <laughs> spiders. And... Um, he's digging and the van actually almost fell on his hand, which oh my goodness, God. he has fast reflexes. He removed his hand. Um, and then he has this brilliant idea to like get these huge boulders and put them under the, the, the tire. And I drove the van out of the ditch wow. while he controlled the rocks. Yeah. So yeah, that. That taught us that, like, you know, in emergency situations, we could stay calm yeah, and we can laugh about it. And so, yeah, we were tested a lot in the beginning <laughs> of our relationship. I, I love it. Now, I, I want to know um, how it was living in this van. I mean, you've lived in small spaces, having lived on a cruise ship, although it sounds like you had some pretty cushy um, accommodations, both as a... Uh, shopping guide and as a, a DVC uh, guide. But, you know, we're, how was it living in, you know, such tight van life space? It was epic. Like, like I'm obsessed. We're both, we're obsessed with van life. It is the coolest thing ever. Um, he's 6'3", so I don't know if it was as comfortable for him. I'm 5'5", five five, so, like, it was probably a lot more comfortable for me than it was for him. But we we loved it. Like we, you know, found a space for everything. Our van was typically like covered in sand and just like a disaster, but it was fine. And it was so cool. We, you know, took freezing cold showers in the van and, you know, we we'd be driving and we'd find this epic place to, you know, this epic view. And we're like, let's just pull over and like do a picnic or something like it's Aww. just such a different type of travel. Um, it's so freeing and yeah, it, we didn't mind it at all. In fact, we often talk about like maybe even doing a tiny home or something. Um, oh my God. Like a home in the future. Cause we, we just, we found that and this leads into the next thing I'll tell you in a sec that we did, but we just found that like, we don't need so much stuff. Because then your stuff starts to own you. And so it was nice to just kind of strip everything away and have like the, you know, we we never dressed up. I, I didn't wear makeup for, I don't know, a couple of years. It was like I was always in just, you know, a T-shirt and shorts. And, and it was just really freeing and um, amazing. It was amazing. I loved it. I would highly recommend it for anyone who's ever thinking about renting a van or or doing an RV trip, I highly recommend it. That's amazing. Now you did eventually go back to Florida, right? Yeah. And you are now working with World of DVC. I, I'd love to hear a little bit about that before we do some compare contrast on cruise lines, because I know Brian wants to do that. But I wanna I wanna hear, you know, how you got to World of DVC and what you're doing there. Yeah. So we got back to Florida. We both went back to DVC. We worked there for a while, um, but it was different. You know, cruise ships weren't running at the time. We were both working on land. And the entire time we were back, we were like, how do we leave again? <laughs> like, <laughs> how do we get out of here? Because we were not <laughs> used to just staying in Florida at this time. And we, we were spoiled, you know. We, we had the chance to go all the time. We were always on the go. And this was weird, you know, having to be normal people, <laughs> normal land folk. And so we were just constantly like plotting on, on how to leave. And I remember one day Kev gets home 
And I was like, I have a crazy idea. <laughs> He's like, okay. I'm like, you got to sit down for this one. <laughs> He's like, okay. I'm like, I think we should leave Disney and just go travel around the world for a year. And wow. I was like all lawyered up. Like I was like, I had a whole list of pros and cons and like, I, uh, Kevin worked for Disney for about 12 years at this point. So I was like, there's okay. no way he's going to drop everything and just leave. And I thought this was going to be like a three hour long discussion. And he just looks at me and he's like, okay, when do you want to do this? I'm like, wow. I don't know. I was thinking like next month and he's like, okay. <laughs> And this is why he is my Prince Charming and we are just so meant to be. And I am so in love with him because Aww. he's just always down. He's always like, he's my adventure buddy and he is just down for anything. And I was like, I don't know how we're going to make this happen because there's just a lot of logistics that go into it. Um, also, we were like freaking out about telling, you know, our DVC family that we were leaving. We All of our closest friends work mm -hmm. there. And um, we're like, we, we hopefully they'll understand, <laughs> be supportive. And they were. They actually really, really were. But um, and, and we figured it out. We, we didn't really have many plans at all. We were just like, we're just going to find a flight to Europe and we're, we're just going to go from there. We'll figure it out. And wow. we um, at first, so we had a lease until December. And this was in, um, we left in August. And we're like, we'll keep our lease because like, what if we don't like it? Or like, you know, what if we can't figure it out? Or what if, you know, this was COVID was still mm -hmm. pretty prominent and a lot of the countries were closed. So we didn't even know if we'd really be able to to jump from country to country. Right. So we're like, we'll keep our lease until then. And then if, if it's going well, well, we'll come home. We'll figure it out then. So we left, we got a one-way ticket to Madrid for $150 because wow. nobody was flying at the time. And we traveled all around Europe. I think we did nine different countries. Um, and then we came back in December and we did a huge garage sale or house yeah. sale or whatever. And we sold pretty much everything. Like we have a tiny storage unit in Orlando and that's like everything we own now. Um, but we sold everything because after living in that van, we're just like, we don't want to be bogged down by stuff anymore, you know? So mm -hmm. we don't need all of this. And we just traveled with a carry on bag and a backpack. And that's what we did wow. for the year. And we went to, um, we went to 19 countries and oh we goodness. completely circumnavigated the globe. And we had some of the most epic experiences and it was actually a lot of them are behind me here. Um, and yeah, we did like just this dream come true bucket list trip all around the world. And then um, we ended the trip at, well, at Aulani and then actually at Disneyland in California. I had never been and we're just like, what a better way to, you know, end this. It's like yeah. it was a very full circle moment. Um, and so, yeah, it was we, we did. We actually ended up doing about a year and a half. So even longer than we originally planned. And and then um, I had some friends that worked over at um, DVC Resale Market. And when they got word that, you know, we were in you were coming Hawaii back and then California, they're like, are you? <laughs> done with this thing <laughs> and um my really good friend marissa she you know works for the company and she's like i've kind of followed her she was a port shopping guide with me then she went to dvc i followed her to dvc then she went to world of dvc and then i followed her there and so she's like are you ready are you ready to come on board and i was like i guess so so yeah, that's how I got over to, that was a long story about how I got over to DVC Resale Market. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So but we- I want to, I want to, um, can I go, Sam? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I, I want to rewind us back for a second to your, your crew life here. I, I had a question about kind of 
on board, what is the atmosphere like for the crew? And in particular, does it change from company to company? Like, did you find, like, I, I always think about our serving team, for instance, and I think, my gosh, these people must just leave here and go straight to bed. But then I think, well, there's a crew bar. Uh, maybe they go and unwind. Like, I'm just like, what's the, I don't know, what's the atmosphere like or the morale like on these different ships for the crew? Is it pretty high across the board kind of party time vibe or is it more sedate? Like, yeah, what what's the atmosphere like for the crew on board? It's not calm by any means. <laughs> it is wild and crazy. I do think it changes from cruise line to cruise line for sure. Um, you are bringing together hundreds of people from all different walks of life, from all different nationalities. And you're putting them on a boat and you're like, <laughs> you're working together, you're eating together, you're partying together. You're, I mean, it gets wild. I, will, I mean, if they ever made a TV show, like it would be number one. <laughs> Yeah. On the charts. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Um, you work really hard. You work crazy hours, but you play really, really hard as well. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's so cool. You have all these people from all over the world and with all their own traditions and, you know, games that they like to play and, and different partying styles. And it all comes together. And it's it's magic. It is it's amazing. Um, and there's, there's also a lot of drama that goes on because <laughs> as you can imagine, like you're living there. So, you right. know, a lot of people are dating on the cruise ship. And then there's this saying um, on ships, it's till gangway do us part. So you like date <laughs> for a contract and then you kind of go your separate ways. But if you're on ships for long enough, you're probably going to end up at some point being on the same ship again. And it's wild. It is wild. Um, so, yeah, I would say maybe not every day, but I would say most days they're not going straight to sleep for sure. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a lot to do. There's also um, – so kind of like you have – the cruise director, you also kind of have that for the crew as well. So there's like a crew enrichment officer that their whole job is planning parties for the crew, planning different games. So a lot of times if we have like a comedian on board or um, a, a magician, they'll do or a hypnotist, like they'll plan shows just for crew. So when everybody's sleeping, you know, we take over the the theater and we'll do like private shows for the crew oh, or like the, oh, cool. the cast on board. Um, the entertainers on board will do crew only shows or there's like talent shows. And there's so many fun activities that are always being planned for the crew. Um, another one that I love is the shore excursions team will typically have either a shore excursions just for the crew that you can sign up for or you can sign up to kind of volunteer and assist on a on a shore excursion as a crew member. So oh, cool. you can go on and, and help and you sign up for it and you get to go on these excursions for free. And then mm -hmm. you just like if the guests have any questions, you just kind of assist. And so that's, you know, a really cool perk, too. But, yeah, the morale is generally amazing. Um, yeah. But, but lots of craziness, lots of drama as well. But. <laughs> Um, and then I would say Disney is probably like a little tamer than mm -hmm. yeah. the other cruise lines. I thought yeah. Hall in America would be the tamest because uh, to be nice, they call it the nursing home at sea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to offend anyone there, but uh, I just assumed. But no, uh, the, the guest not, life not the might be side, a little right. Yeah, not not on the cruise. Well, side. the guests the guests go to bed a little earlier. The crew has more time on board to have fun. So there you it, go. Yeah, um, there you go. Exactly. yeah. I'm yeah. curious. Uh, I'm curious about um, in crew life. Um, you've got a ton of different nationalities with lots of different native languages. I'm curious to know. You know, obviously everyone pretty much speaks English because that's what the guests speak, at least on the cru the cruise lines that we're talking about, of course. Yeah. Um, 
But I'm curious whether the crew tend to segregate themselves based on language or culture or things like that. You know, we see this even in the United States. You see people sort of um, pairing off in groups uh, that might align with either, you know, religious background or an ethnic background or a language or something like that. But, I'm, you know, we have this really, um, you know, microcosm of the world on the ship, all these different cultures and ethnicities and nationalities and languages in one place. How how does that work? Does that happen? Or do you see people more mingling and then speaking English? Yeah. So fun fact, everybody has to speak English for actually safety reasons. Mm. Um, if there was an emergency on board the ship, you have to be able to communicate with the guests. So if, you know, something were to happen and a guest asks you a question, like you have to be able to be able to, you have to be able to direct them to their emergency station or whatever it is. Um, yeah. I mean, of course people are going to group together, but you're also on a boat. Like, you know, there's only so far you can group <laughs> together, you know, like eventually the groups are going to kind of be next to each other. And then all of a sudden right. they're talking and being best friends. Um, so yes and no, they, they, of course, they're, they're going to kind of group together because they share similarities and they, they celebrate the same holidays mm. together and that kind of thing. But there is a lot of mixing, of course. You know, you mm -hmm. become friends with people from all over the world. I literally think I could throw a dart at a map and I will have a friend in every single country after working oh, on so board cool. cruise ships. Um, actually, during our travels, we visited a lot of our friends from from ships. Um, and then also, like, they'll they'll hold parties and stuff. So like if you celebrate a certain holiday in your country, they'll have like a huge party for that holiday and you get to try the different food. And a lot of them, you know, are probably chefs on board or, you know, whatever department they work and they have the hookup and they can provide, you know, specific foods from their country. And um, then there's like a DJ and the DJ will play certain music or, you know, we'll have like, we had a lot of like Filipino karaoke nights and stuff like oh, that on board. <laughs> and so you, you really start to learn about the different cultures and there's so much mixing and mingling as well. Oh, that's so how much fun. Is, how is the food on board? Lots of speculation from people about like what the food's like. And actually we were talking to somebody, I forget who, uh, but a crew member on Disney Cruise Line and they were saying, Oh my God, when there's the leftover French toast and they bring it down to the mess, it's like a free for all so that we can get like, the French toast or the waffles or something. And we're like, my God. I think it was afford. Rebecca that was telling us that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, but somebody was like, well, you can't afford French toast for the crew at these prices that they're charging us. But like, I, so I'm just curious, like, how is the food on board? Cause we've heard different things from different, different people. Yeah. It's, so I never ate in the crew area on Disney. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Actually, no, I did. I did. Um, and it was pretty good from what I when remember. You were in shop oh, when you were a shopping guide, you probably did. Yeah, but did, I did but a very, very short stint on Disney. Um, so I did eat in the crew mess and I remember it being good, but, um, it also has to do with th who is working on board. So for like Norwegian and Holland America, a majority of the crew members, like a big majority of the crew members were Filipino and Indonesian. And so in the crew mess, they actually will have a lot of traditional foods from their home countries so that they feel a little bit more at home. And so, you know, that might not be my palate, you know, like I might not think it's the best food in the world. So it really depends on who you talk to, but for them, it's a little slice of home. And so right. it, it really depends on the cruise line that you're on. Like MSC, for instance, has like a lot of European crew members. And so you might see like completely different food on, on that cruise line than you would on maybe like a Norwegian or, or Holland. Um, and then you also have the crew mess versus the officer's mess. And that's going to be very different as well. So your crew mess is going to be more of like a, a buffet style. Um, and then a lot of the officer's mess are like white tablecloths. And, you know, you oh, order wow. off a menu and the food comes straight from the dining room. And so that oh. kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what that crew life looks like. 
Um, and the food is phenomenal typically in the officer's <laughs> mess because it's coming straight from, from the, uh, the dining rooms. And then of course you have, you know, when I was a DVC guide, we would eat at all the restaurants and the food right. was amazing, <laughs> but you eat the same food every right. single <laughs> every <food>. contract, right? <laughs> every, every week or, you every eat, week, the, right. then you start the over show. again. And right. Even that gets old, you know. I mean, I was having filet mignon and and <laughs> lobster, but eventually right. I was like, "Can I just get like some spinach, please? <laughs> like, I just want some, <laughs> some just chicken with nothing on it. Like, I just want. I don't want all the sauces. I mean, try to lose a pound on a cruise ship, like, and then oh you God. work there forever, and it's just, yeah, it's like, yeah. can I just get like something healthy, Can't please, like, an broccoli. apple, or something? yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Let me ask this too. You had a lot of guest interaction, both as a crew member and you know as a DVC guide. But what's the? I'm gonna set this up as a sort of two parter. What's the thing that the guests do that, like you would say, most annoys the crew? And what's the thing that you've seen guests do that the crew is like, that's amazing, right? So I'll give you an example. We had someone on recently who said, you know, it's always really welcome when people just ask us about us right? Like they yeah. get to know us a little bit. Like that's a really special interaction to have with the guests because it feels like they care about us. Not We're not there to serve them. We're there to, you know, interact with them. Right. So, I, you know, totally. that's, that's one example we've heard, but I'm curious from, you know, your time on board, like what were those things that like a guest would do that would just be like, oh my God, that is the worst thing ever versus that is the greatest thing ever. So a lot of times when guests go on a cruise ship, they, I don't know what it is. It's like they step on the gangway and it's just like their brain sometimes like falls out of their head and they just, they're like, I'm on vacation. Like, give me a margarita and I don't want to think for the rest of the week. Yeah. And you'll just get like the craziest questions. Like, <laughs> I mean, and they'll just do some dumb things. Like, you're just like, seriously? Um, so I, I think that's probably like, like when they walk up to you and they're like, do you live here? Like you, you live on the boat? Like, like, where do you think I live? Like, what do you mean? You think I go home every day? Like, are you crazy? Right. Where do um, I go? Yeah. So just like the, the stupid questions. I, I mean, I'm yeah. sure I would like to give them the benefit of the doubt and think like, you do right. not ask these questions when you're on land, but for some right. reason you're just, maybe it's the, the, the sea or the waves or I right. don't know. Well, or like the person who, you know, the, the boat is parked at Port Canaveral and the person says, goes to guest services and said, I paid for an ocean view and I'm staring at the parking lot. You, <laughs> you'd like, be surprised like how many haven't times. We have port yet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or like my microwave in my room isn't working. Uh, there's no microwaves in the room. Yeah, no, I keep I keep trying to reheat my food and, and uh, that's a safe. Um, safe. There's no microwave in the room. Um, yeah. Uh, there's oh my we, there's a, we could probably write a book on all the crazy things that we hear. Um, and then the best thing. For me personally, because I had so much guest interaction, it has to just be the, you know, the amazing families that I've met throughout the years that I am still very close with to this day, who would literally call me and be like, I want to go on a ship in March. What crew, where what are ship you are you going to be yeah. on? I don't care where you are in the world. I'm going to go on that ship because you were there. Oh, um, it, it gives me the chills because I'm still like, I'm still super close with a lot of them to this day. In fact, I, I didn't tell you this part, but um, when we were, when Kevin and I were traveling in our year of travel, we went to Thailand and I actually ended up breaking my leg over there. Oh my oh. goodness. Yeah. I had to get surgery. It was wild. And wow, um, it was a very traumatic experience and we really didn't tell many people. And I think like besides our family, the first two people that I told were some of my guests on the ship um, who I'm, wow. I've become really close with over the years. And so, yeah, that would probably be my favorite part. Oh, my goodness. Well, how awful that you broke your leg. I'm glad that I did it for the story. Sick. 
I just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we always. That sounds actually, like something you would do, Danny. <laughs> we joke because Sam Sam got COVID on a Disney cruise in April twenty twenty one, I think it was, and was quarantined. No, on no, twenty two. Like night twenty two. Twenty two. And so we got off the cruise ship and we joked. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have Sam do something that lands her in the brig for the evening. So in we the can brig, give you that. Yeah. bring you all that experience. Yeah. Uh, you know, I you do know. it for the listeners, right? I yeah. just do it for the stories, the show content. Yeah. I, you know, the funny thing is, we were doing. So we were doing some YouTube videos in the beginning of our travels, and, and then we quickly realized that that editing process is just not for me. <laughs> and we want to, you know, we only had one year of travel. Like, it's not like we're going to be doing this for the next 10 years. So we're like, we got to we gotta just focus on having fun and making the most of every moment. And so we kind of gave up on the YouTube thing. Um, and everyone was like, when they... We didn't. We really didn't tell anyone for a long time. Like it's still not really on social media at all. Um, but when our friends found out, they're like, "You didn't do a YouTube video? Like, come on! Like that would have gone viral." Oh, oh my goodness! Yes, if, if we were gonna ever do it, it probably would have right. been good to do been, it then. Yeah, um, because yeah. we ended up having to. We were six days away from leaving Thailand. We were all set up to go to Bali in six days. And then oh I broke my God. leg and we ended up having to extend. So we lived in Thailand for three months. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, it's a story. You'll be able to tell maybe your grandchildren someday. Yeah. <laughs> kind of do it for the story. <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, look, the other question that I had for you that I'd be remiss in not asking, we don't have many people on who have experience with, you know, all of these ports of call. Right. So actually a couple questions here. What was your favorite, and maybe not one, I'll give you a couple. Like what was your favorite ports of call to visit? Uh I'll start there. And then I have one follow-up question. But yeah, what was your your favorite two, three, five, whatever it is, ports of call that you got to visit? <laughs> Can I say like cruises? Because ports, yeah. ports yeah. are hard, you know, like, sure. I can yeah. say like the whole cruise. So like epic cruise, Alaska. I think Alaska is like the, the creme de la creme like it is bucket yeah. list experience there's just the whole cruise is full of bucket list experiences like mm -hmm. um i'll kind of tell you like my favorite cruises and then like my favorite excursions to do on Love that it. cruise okay. so like for alaska um i mean something i will remember for the rest of my life was we got to do um like a glacial ice cave tour so we actually oh, cool. went inside of the glacial ice caves and then we put like those crampon things on your shoes that with the spikes and we walked on top of the glacier and like wow. there were these huge crevasses and I'm just like leaping over the crevasses and I've just felt like the coolest person in the world. <laughs> um, that was like one of my top excursions I've ever done. And then um, taking the helicopter up to the glacier and like dog sledding oh, yeah. on the glacier. Epic. Ugh. The the train and Skagway. Um, oh, we keep the hearing whale about the train. Tours. Oh Ugh. yeah, number one tour in Skagway. Uh, whale watching, zip lining. Just it's just adventure after adventure. And then um, my other two favorite cruises would have to be the Baltic cruise um, that Ooh. I did on Disney, as well as the Mediterranean cruise. Mm. And so the Baltic, I did two different Baltic routes. Um, I got to go to Russia, which I probably never get to go there again. Um, yeah. So that was just cool to be able to, you know, experience. I, I got to do that twice. Um, and then we did a route that went to Iceland. And so like Amazing. that was epic. And we did the Golden Circle. So that was like my favorite tour. And then the Med. Um, taking the boat to Cinque Terre and just seeing, you know, all the colorful uh. buildings on the cliff from the ocean or from the, from the seaside. And um, yeah, that was, that was awesome. And actually speaking of that, Kev and I are moving to Italy for the months of August and September. We're going to go work oh, over wow. there. Yeah. Take wow. advantage of this whole work from home thing. So we're going to spend <laughs> the summer in Italy. Yeah. Nice. 
Nice. That's Italy was amazing. one of our favorite places to visit. We visited uh, right out of law school after we took the bar exam. It was our Where'd trip, you go? Uh, what was your favorite place? Uh, we went to uh, Capri, Rome, Florence, and Venice. And I'd okay. say my top two were definitely... I loved Venice. I loved the ability to wander around and just get lost in the streets. And like one day we wandered into the Jewish quarter in Venice and just sat there and just kind of watched the world around us. And it was really interesting. Uh, And then definitely loved, I loved the Florence area or Tuscany. Um, Florence Mm -hmm. was nice, but what we actually did is we took a trip outside of Florence one day to a walled city called Lucca. Uh, And it's, it's known because the uh, you weren't allowed to, I think you weren't allowed to build buildings over a certain height. And so this one family got around that by planting a giant tree on top of their tower (laughs) for their home. And so this tree grew up above the height that was uh, the limit. And so became the sort of symbol of the city. And they've got this just gorgeous wall and you can get a nice bottle of wine. You can bike right around the wall. Yeah, it was just, it was was gorgeous. Yeah. It's known as like it's the city of I think they call it the city of a hundred churches or something like that because within the city walls there's like a ton of just these really really tiny little you know churches, um, but it's a it's a beautiful place to visit. It's a, it's really a it's a village, not like it's not like a you know what we think of as a city in the United States. It's more like a little you know village, but it's beautiful and yeah. charming and just lovely. I love those like the 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 little towns that you just feel are like right out of the storybook. And, yep. you know, for lunch, you, you just go to a local market and get all the fresh food. Yep. And yep. Um, we're, we're yep. just excited for that. Like on our lunch break, just going to the market. Or, I you love know, that. Like with huh. our, I want a basket, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a basket and a bicycle with a bell. Yeah, I think. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we're, um, we actually just booked it. We're going to be staying one month in Florence um, and then, so that way we get to go. Yeah, to, you can take day you know, trips in, exactly. all around Tuscany. Yeah. I've never been to Venice. I'm dying to go to Venice. I don't think Kev's been there either, actually. Um, and then we don't know where we're going to do the second month. So we're just going to kind of play it by ear as we do um, yeah. and then kind of figure it out from there. But um, I, I'm, I'm glad that you liked Venice because I was, I was a little we worried that it Venice. was going to be too touristy. So you didn't feel it, that. It, it, it is very touristy. It can touristy. definitely be that. Yeah. But, but got, there are yeah. lots of you can walk around in and down the little little streets and get lost basically. And you know you can if you if you're in um what's the big square Saint Mark's Square Saint Mark's is that square. right? Yeah. Yeah. Saint so Mark. if you're in that big square, it's filled with tourists and it's also filled with pigeons. Um, but you know if you venture down you know the path not traveled, you will get out of the touristy areas and it's it's a really beautiful place and of course, it's just very you know we don't know if Venice will be there in a hundred years, right yeah. it may, maybe you know sink into the into the sea, so I don't like know Florida. it's a, <laughs> yeah, like Florida um so definitely yeah. a place i I, I, I don't would mind recommend. the touristic areas that when you're there, you're like, okay, I, I get why it's so busy here. Like, that's how I felt about Santorini, Greece. Like, right. yes, it is very touristic. It's very busy, but it's like, I totally get why everybody talks yeah. about this place. I totally get why people come here. I don't mind those. But when it's like too commercialized, that's when it like, yeah, I think you'll like Re- Venice then because it's still it's you know it's a very obviously old city and it feels like a very old city. It okay. doesn't, yeah. yeah. So it, it doesn't yeah. feel commercial like maybe Rome does. All those portions of Rome don't feel commercial, but other portions of Rome do. But it's not a big. It doesn't feel like yeah. It doesn't feel like a big city in that way. I think okay. you'll like it. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll check it out for sure. Well, I feel like we would be remiss too, Danny, since you spent a good chunk of your time on board as a port shopping guide, not at least asking the question, like, so where are the good ports to go find stuff to buy versus <laughs> the ports that you would tell people, like, just don't even bother? Like, so And just, is I... Diamonds International any good? <laughs> like, should I actually buy from Diamonds International? That's really what the inquiring minds want to know. Okay. Um, so I would say it really depends on what you're looking for as far as like the ports of call go. Like, um, for instance, like Cartagena, Colombia, like the most beautiful emeralds you'll ever see. Um, and then the, the thing, the fact of the matter is the Caribbean is just a tax and duty free zone. 
and they have so many people. I mean, thousands, thousands, like these stores, the reason why they're able to do the discounts that they do is because these stores see more volume in one hour than like a retail store in the United States will see in an entire year. So they're buying and selling in huge, huge, huge volume. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, like all of these stores are better deals than you're going to get at most retail stores. I mean, if you have this like, you know, jeweler that's a family friend that works on 47th Street in New York City and you've been going <laughs> to him for years and he knows your whole family and he you made your great grandmother's wedding ring, are you going to get a better deal there? Probably. <laughs> like, I, you know, maybe you have the hookup. But like for the average person, like you're not going to find those kind of prices at, at a regular retail store in the mall or just like a jeweler over here. So yeah, I, I would say um, it's definitely worth it. The prices you have to, I would say always go with a shopping guide, like a port shopping guide because they, they really like, I mean, I knew the owner of diamonds international. Right. So when I was getting people deals, like, I wasn't negotiating with like the average person behind the counter. Like I was going straight to the top. So it is, it is super helpful to shop with the shopping guide. Um, and, and yeah, they have a huge selection. Um, so like pretty much anything that you're looking for, they either have it or they can get it for you really easily. Um, and then, and then they do have great prices. They usually start pretty high, but they're always (laughs) negotiable. Right, um, right. Yeah. There's a never, lot of wiggle room there. Yeah, never, ever, ever. My biggest piece of advice, never pay the ticket price in any yeah. of those stores. Ever. <laughs> what, about, what about the onboard shops? I'm curious as to, um, you know, onboard jewelry in particular, since obviously retail goods like T-shirts, are, you know, if, it's, if you want a Disney brand T-shirt, you're going to have to pay Disney branded prices, right? Right. But what about like the jewelry onboard cruise lines? Is that um, similarly deal, you know, a, a good deal or are you better off at the port? Um, it depends on which cruise line you're on because some of the cruise lines have much bigger, like, for instance, Norwegian, I think it was Norwegian, had Colombian emeralds. So like they're a big, re- you know, they're a big retailer in the Caribbean. So they had a much bigger selection than some of the other cruise lines. Uh, and they can also negotiate pricing a little bit more. Whereas some of the shops on board, they're pretty strict with the negotiation. So I would just say it really depends on the cruise line. Feel it out. But I would always recommend checking out both. Like, and then if you see something on board that you don't see in the ports, then, go, you know, a hundred percent go for that um, and vice versa, you know, but l- look in both before you make that decision. Cause you might find that you find something that you like in port that's cheaper, or maybe you find something you like better or vice versa. Maybe you find something you like better yeah. on board. And so then you just, go for that but yeah Yeah. well i know on disney cruise line that in the shops on jewelry they do negotiate because we were looking at something we didn't end up buying it but they were like oh i can offer you this discount oh i can offer you that discount which just means i'm negotiating the price that's what that's the code language for we're starting to we're starting to haggle here so you know there's wiggle room here in the price. The, the key is always to then just become completely distant. Ah, well, we're going to think. And then suddenly yeah. it's like, oh, let me get my calculator out and just do the, What are you thinking of that? You know, and then suddenly yeah. numbers start to come <laughs> so down. It's so funny yeah. what yeah. will happen when you start to walk away. Yeah, <laughs> always do sure. that. That's my trick. Yeah. Like yeah. I would even, I when I was a shopping guide, like I used to even tell my my clients that because my goal is yeah. to get them the best deal. Like I don't care. These jewelry stores make enough money. Like I want right. to get you the best deal. So I'm like, I'll be like, let's let's just walk, let's walk away for a minute. Right. Walk like, away for a we'll second. We'll walk out of the store. We'll go to Senor Frog's next door and we'll come back and see. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. And if they're like, no, 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 let me, let, let me ask my manager then you know right. there's more room but if they're like if they let you walk out you know you got a really good price yeah yeah, yeah that's well, a great point. never sh- never show them emotional attachment because then it's game over <laughs> right <laughs> absolutely game over. Game over. and you know what's funny is when i'm buying something for myself 
salespeople, we are the best. We are the best purchasers. We're the best clients because <laughs> we are very passionate and, and I, I can't hide it. When it, when I'm shopping for somebody else, oh, yeah, got my game you face on. on. Like, you don't want to yeah. mess with me. But, oh, if it's for myself and I fall in love with it, you're going to know. <laughs> I'm not very good at hiding. I love it. All right. I got to ask just a couple of questions before we wrap up here. Um, okay. What was your favorite cruise line to be, to work on? Cause obviously, I mean, you had experience on a number of different lines and then you went to Disney through DVC, which was a slightly different experience, obviously as in a different role, but what's the, you know, what did you like being on? Did you like being on the other uh, other cruise lines? Did you like being on Disney? And, and and what are the reasons for whichever one was your favorite? It's hard to pick. So I could probably tell you like what I liked and maybe didn't like about each. Yeah. Um, that might be a little bit easier to answer. For Disney, I love – so you know that the service on Disney is just – top of the line like there's no other cruise line like it and the crew get treated the same way on Disney mm -hmm. and so that I loved like I really felt taken care of all the time I'd even be like please please don't clean my room like I'm fine <laughs> I'm good do not disturb and they would still be like it's okay it's okay like, <laughs> and and they just really take care of you there and um yeah so I would say that's probably my favorite part about Disney. Um, as far as like fun party lifestyle, I would say Norwegian is crazy. They're all about <laughs> freestyle cruising. And, um, and then Holland America was like, I feel like where I met some of my best friends, like people mm. that I am still the closest with to, to this day. It's a lot more like the, the ships are smaller, so wow. the it's a little bit more intimate, the crew mm -hmm. life. And then I did a contract on a cruise line called Silver Sea. Yeah, really small, right? Very small. Every single room on board was a suite. Mm -hmm. So like minimum 15 grand for yeah. a seven-night cruise on these ships. I got to be in one of those suites because there was like not <laughs> enough crew cabins or something on board. I literally had a butler. Oh my God. Assigned to my suite. I had oh a huge God. like jacuzzi tub in my room. Like wow. every morning I would get woken up. The, the butler would come in and and draw my shades and like <laughs> set up my table with a white tablecloth and a beautiful pink flower every morning. And my breakfast would be there. You could order caviar to the room. Like, oh I mean, goodness. it was just insane. So that was like probably the most unique crew yeah. experience I've, I've ever had, but yeah, it's, it's hard to pick a favorite. Um, yeah. It's, it's tough to pick a favorite. That's like picking your favorite kid. Yeah. yeah. So it's easy when you only have one kid, so. <laughs> or easy when you only went on one cruise line. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We love it. Any Brian, more questions? Our, I, I was going to ask, um, what was your, uh, this is going to sound silly, but what's like your favorite like meal from when you were on Disney? Like, Ooh. because you, they repeated a lot, right? So I'm, yeah. I'm curious at what was the thing that you, you know, you had eaten it a million times, but you could still actually eat it if somebody offered it to you maybe today. The tuna tower. Oh, oh. <laughs> the ahi tuna tower. The ahi tuna tower. I could eat that every day. I, sometimes I wouldn't even eat dinner. I would just have two ahi tuna tower. <laughs> and I would, I would go to the dining. If I was just exhausted, I would just go to the dining room and, you know, you switch around every day and, but, but I had the hookup, you know, like I knew someone. Yeah. So I was like, can I just get that tuna tower every day? <laughs> um, loved the tuna tower. And then, um, ooh, oh, those beignets at Tiana's place. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. I dream yeah. of those. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so they now have them on the Wish as well um, at the Bayou, and they have them in the French Quarter Lounge as well on on the on the Wonder. Not just so you you don't have to wait for them for dessert in Tiana's. You can actually get them in the morning for breakfast That's or as an afternoon dangerous. snack, or you know you have to pay yeah. for them if you get them at the at the French Quarter Lounge. But they're delicious. What are your favorite meals on board? Um, well, the Apollo, uh, chicken parm, <laughs> that's always, that's, that's probably, I would say the favorite if I have to choose like specialty dining. So that's at, at brunch. Um, oh, Apollo brunch is just, yes. Apollo don't brunch eat is, for two days before you do yes, that. <laughs> yes. But I would say I love, I mean, I love the, I love the escargot and the Chateaubriand in, you know, Royal Palace, Royal Court, yeah. Lumiere's, you know, that, that restaurant. Um, I also really love um, the truffle persets in animators as well as I like the pork chop in animators. That's probably okay. my favorite. The truffle yeah. persets were like my team's favorite. Yeah. It, it was it was a favorite amongst everyone on my team. Like you knew if someone had to work a little bit longer and they couldn't make it to the dining room and that was on the menu, like you better have that ready for them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, mine is so the Brian- lasagna and palo and Actually, I think my new favorite in the main dining is that um, angel hair pasta with the scallops in the Marvel restaurant. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like a, so yeah, that's it's a like new a, one. Yeah, it's there really good. There was a really scallop nice. dish. Where was that scallop dish? There was another scallop was dish. Was it the one, one with the puff pastry that was served on fro- the special frozen menu? Because now mm. that's in the Arendelle restaurant on The Wish. No. It was like, I want to say there were like mushrooms in it. Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't, don't think I've had one. that. Yeah. I don't remember which restaurant it was in, but oh, now well, I'm I've... hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I have one last question for you, Danny, which is, so you sailed on the four, well, I guess we would call them original ships now because they're not the classics yeah. or just the magic and the wonder. But what was your favorite ship to sail on with Disney? I, I So I liked the wonder and the magic. Mm-hmm. because I liked how small and intimate they were. I liked that I could meet someone on the first day and I could, you know, genuinely say like, I'll see you later in the cruise and actually see them and spend time with them later on in the cruise. Whereas yeah. like, you know, on the fantasy and the dream, it's like, I'm probably never going to see you again. So it was <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, I, I really liked that. And I also just love that those smaller ships, I love the itineraries on the smaller ships. Like, you know, they can, those ships can get into some of the smaller ports, which yeah. I, I, yeah, I prefer. There's only, I mean, that's another thing, you know, being on ships for 10 years. I'm like, there's only so many times you can go to the Caribbean. <laughs> like, there's only so many times you can go to Cozumel, Mexico. <laughs> like, right. yes. I want something new. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. For sure. No. Well, Danny, it has been such a pleasure talking to you. I've had so much fun. Um, do you want to let folks know how they can find you at World of DVC? Because uh, uh, we do get quite a few folks on uh, our podcast who are DVC owners. So, yeah, do you want to let them know how they can find you? Yes, especially if you're a DVC owner. Um, I just want to say real quick, there is the most amazing cruise swap program um, that we have. So as you know, you can use your points to go on a cruise, but if you've looked at those cruise point charts, you probably know that they are very, very high. Well, through the world of DVC, you can actually use your points to go on a cruise for about half the cost of wow. if you were to book direct through Disney. So definitely, if you love to cruise, like look into that. I cannot think of a better way to go on Disney Cruise Line um, if you're a DVC member and you love to be out on the high seas. Um, but yeah, if you are looking to add on to your membership, if you're looking to purchase for the very first time, um, the coolest thing about our company is every single one of us, we are all former Disney cast members. We are all former DVC guides. So we have a lot of experience. We have helped thousands and thousands of families join DVC, both direct and resale. Um, so we have a ton of knowledge and we are so passionate about making sure that you, you know, find the right contract for your family. We'll help you to, you know, answer all of your questions. 
So definitely reach out to us for that. And then also if maybe you're an owner and you need to sell a contract for whatever reason, we are more than happy to do that. In fact, our inventory is pretty low because we're just selling everything. So uh, there's a (laughs) lot of buyers out there right now. If you want to sell, we can definitely sell your contract for you too. The best way to reach me is actually my cell phone. (laughs) You can call me or actually text me any day, um, pretty much any time. If I'm sleeping, I just won't answer. But my number is 954-257-2425. So that's 954-257-2425. Or if email is better for you, you can email me at danny at dvcresalemarket.com. Awesome. And we will and also we, make will sure s- to put that in our show notes so that folks can yeah. find it easily. Um, yeah. And I'll say that we actually bought our resale contracts that we have. We, we do have one direct contract at Riviera through Disney, but we bought our Grand California points and our Aulani points uh, all through DVC resale, resale Market. Um, prior to when you were working there. So it was with one of your colleagues, but <laughs> I'll forgive you. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all I've a big family DVC. there. So. I've also used World so. of DVC to rent our points a few times. So yeah, it's, uh, that's right. Yeah. It's, it's a great, yeah. great, great. Renting yeah. is renting is great. Like when we were traveling and, you know, all over the world, we weren't using the points one year. So we actually rented them out through the rental store as well. And it was awesome because it gave us yeah. more money to travel. <laughs> it was exactly. perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Danny, it has been such a pleasure chatting with you this evening. We really, really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show and wish you all the best with your upcoming adventures and your time in Italy. Thank, Thank you so, you. so much. Yes, maybe one day we could do like a little bonus episode and I can Skype in from Florence or <laughs> wow. Ooh, oh, I love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. It was it was so great chatting with you guys. Thank you so much for having me on the show.